Hello students, our today's topic is on general aim of education with respect to contemporary society. Introduction All activities can be classified as aimed and aimless. An activity which has a beginning, an end and an intervening process between the two can be said to have an aim. Devi has defined an aim. An aim implies an orderly activity, one in which the order consists in the progressive completing of a process. Here, the word orderly refers to the systematic nature of the activity. An aim gives a sense of order to the activity. The word ordered refers to the direction implied in the activity. It influences the activity at each successive step. Therefore, an aim is that which gives a sense of order and direction to an activity. The importance of aim in education has been emphasized by scholars, philosophers and educators through all ages. Education must have aims as activity with an aim is all one with acting intelligently. This means a system of education which is not clear about its aim or which works towards undesirable aim is bound to fail. B. D. Bhatia rightly observed that without the knowledge of aims, education is like a sailor who does not know his goal or his destination and the child is like a rudderless vessel which will be drifted along somewhere ashore. Some of the general aims of education with respect to the contemporary society are as follows. First, individual aim. According to Sir Percy Nunn, individuality is the ideal of life and he further added that a scheme of education is ultimately to be valued by its success in fostering the highest degree of individual excellence. The interests of the individual are supreme and superior to that of the society. It is only because of the individuals that a society is dear. Social institutions exist only for the well-being of the individual. The individual is greater than society because nothing good enters into the human world except in and through the free activities of individual men and women. All great men were free individuals. Aims is based upon the fact that individual is an architect of his own fact. He is responsible for his own destiny. Education, therefore, must cater to the complete development of an individual. Social aim of education Man is essentially a social animal. He is born into social heritage. He has become what he is due to the influences upon him of other social beings, parents, teachers, schoolmates, brothers, sister, friend, enemies, colleagues, etc. Therefore, he is only a unit of larger whole society, usually the state. Man enjoys the facilities of health, housing, food, education, transport, communication and so many other comforts of modern living which cannot be enumerated exhaustively. He enjoyed this comfort only because of his membership in an organized society. The supporters of the social aim of education believe that society or state alone is real and the individual is only a means and therefore must always work for the welfare and progress of the society. They therefore hold that 
an individual should be educated for the good of society. The function of education according to the social aim is to work consistently for the welfare of the state, subordinating the welfare of the individual to that of the state. The state has a right to sap and mold the individual so as to suit its own purposes and progress. It uses education as a most convenient means for preparing individuals to play different roles in society. Knowledge as an aim of education. Knowledge has almost been widely accepted as the aim of education since the time of sophist, that is 400 BC. Knowledge is a powerful agent for intellectual satisfaction. It is essential for adjustment and the growth of society and also a means of never-ending happiness. Healthy adjustment is possible only when the individual possesses knowledge of the same. It is knowledge that makes human mind a thinking agent. It provides the linkage between the teacher, the pupil and the social environment. The present civilization has come to pass through the dissemination of knowledge through the medium of education. Cicero put it as, as a field, however fertile, cannot be fruitful without cultivation, neither can a mind without learning. It is stated by the advocates of this aim that the function of the school is a communication of knowledge of all subjects. Socrates has also said that one who had true knowledge could not be other than virtuous. So, education cannot but have knowledge as its important aim. Knowledge is a means of never-ending happiness. It has helped men overcome disease and misery, superstitions and imaginary fear. Knowledge is man's valuable asset. It is an essential means of promoting human welfare. Vocational Aims of Education The vocational aim is the direct outcome of industrial and scientific advancement. It is also called bread and butter aim. It can train individuals to become socially efficient. There will therefore neither be drags nor parasites on the society. They will contribute to increased production and national wealth. The advocates of the vocational aim argue that all the knowledge a pupil gains in the school, all the culture the pupil acquires in the schools will be of no use if he cannot make both aims meet when he enters life. Vocationalization of education is an important slogan of modern democratic education. Without a proper emphasis on vocational aspects of education, those who merely go to school suffer all their lives. Vocational education strikes a balance between economic and industrial progress. It is purposeful activity and prepares students for a useful life and useful occupation. In the words of Gandhiji, True education ought to be a kind of insurance against unemployment. Vocational aims of education will reduce the impact of verbalism and mere intellectual domination. Vocational training is also suitable for the person with lower intelligence. Next we have character building aim of education. Character is the cream of life. Education consists in the cultivation of certain human values and development of attitudes and habits which constitute the character of a person. Gandhiji kept top priority to character education. By this he meant that the purpose of education is to develop courage, strength and virtue. Raymond states the teacher's ultimate concern is to cultivate not wealth of music, nor fullness of knowledge, nor refinement of feeling, but 
strength and purity of character. The Secondary Education Commission has observed education is a training of character to fit the students to participate creatively as citizen. Character is a product of innate endowment, influence of environment and constant contemplation. Good acts and habits are the basis of good character and therefore character formation is a continuous process from life to death and education should be given to cultivate strength and purity of character. Complete living as an aim of education. This aim has been formulated and brilliantly expounded by Herbert Spencer. Education, according to this great thinker, should acquaint us with the laws and ways of complete living. Complete living implies living one's life to the full in its various aspects which clamor for development and expression. Every aspect of one's personality should find expression through various types of activities and experiences. Role of education in developing complete living. First, education should enable men to know the art of self-preservation. Secondly, education should enable one to earn his living and secure the necessities of life. Men cannot live merely on air and water. Education should be such as will equip the child to get a job to make him efficient to earn his living. Thirdly, education should impart knowledge about bearing and rearing children who carry the message of the previous generation. Only thus can it ensure survival. Fourthly, education for complete living aims at preparing the pupil to perform well social and political responsibilities. Lastly, education must prepare one to utilize one's leisure well by enjoying the refinements of culture, art, literature and the like. This will promote physical and mental health. Harmonious development as an aim of education. Education should produce a well-balanced personality. A human child is blessed with a number of power and capabilities. Development of all these powers of the child should be harmonious in order to produce a well-balanced personality. Democratic aim of education. Education should aim at teaching and inculcating democratic values in the children. Democratic values implies respect for the individuality of each and every person, provision for free expression and fearless airing of differences of opinion and cooperative and collective decision making. Some of the important values or principles of democracy are respect for individuality, equality, tolerance, cooperative living and faith in chains through persuasion. According to University Education Commission, education is a great instrument of social emancipation by which democracy establishes, maintains and protects the spirit of equality among its members. Education, therefore, must work for inculcating democratic values in the student. According to Rose, schools ought to stress the duties and responsibilities of individual citizens. Everywhere, there should be a spirit of teamwork. The emphasis should always be laid on community. The true function of the school in a democracy, therefore, is to provide for the enrichment of individual life. It is a prepared environment in which he may best blossom. Thus, the schools 
should aim at producing such individuals who are social, disciplined, creative and adaptable. Religious aims of education E. D. Burton states, religion and education are natural allies. Both recognize and have to do with spiritual as over against an exclusive attention to the physical and material. Both seek to emancipate men. A. N. Whitehead explains religious education as a religious education is an education which inculcates duty and reverence. Dr. Radha Krishnan has also said, education according to Indian tradition is not merely a means to earn a living, nor it is only a necessity of thought or a schools of citizenship. It is initiation into a life of spirit, a training of human soul in the pursuit of truth and the practice of virtue. Education for religious quality in experience should build into the character of children, the power to mobilize and organize their life energies for the realization of the growing body of ideal value to which they become committed. The ability to act decisively, effectively and courageously on behalf of tested ideals is the ultimate test of religious devotion to them. Conclusion Aims in education are an integral part of the educative process. It gives direction to an activity and helps us to act with meaning. It is necessary to assess the outcomes of the educative process. Educational aims give continuity and significance to education. Of the above mentioned aims of education, not a single aim is complete in itself. Therefore, we need to synthesize the aim according to the circumstances and situation.